Welcome back. Believe it or not, there's only one feature standing between us and a fully functional stablecoin, the dreaded liquidation event. This also is a great opportunity for us to learn a bit more about Viper events. You'd probably agree that it's not really a lending-based stablecoin unless there's some threat we could break the user's kneecaps if they become a deadbeat. This is accomplished in our case by a liquidation function. If your collateral is not backed because the token price has dropped, we're going to liquidate you. And But we're going to be nice about it. We're going to fire an event so that they can at least sniff the blockchain and realize they've been liquidated as opposed to just having lost their collateral. Within the EVM, events are a core feature. Every smart contract is capable of emitting events. You can see right here on the Curve DAO token, if you click on the events tab on Etherscan, it's sniffing the blockchain and trying to find out transfer and approval events. What an event is within the EVM is it's an interesting way of logging data that is a little bit more lightweight than actually writing it to the state variables. So when you write something to a, the state variables, it has to be indexed in such a way that it's easy for other smart contracts to look up. Event data can't be read by other smart contracts, so it doesn't need all this fancy indexing. And as a result, you can access and write event data in a much more lightweight fashion. But it's only really useful to blockchain observers. So for example, Etherscan, which is checking every block, is storing all the event data. And it's actually using this, uh, for example, if you look at the token pages where it has this nice chart of holders, it's deriving this by looking at all the transfer events and logging them. This able to do this because every ERC-20 token is required to emit an event along the parameters we talked about, approvals, transfers. So this provides a comprehensive view of the history of the stablecoin. So you can see where events are useful. Within Viper, the way that it looks like in terms of the syntax is creating an event object. So for the ones we discussed, approval and transfer, they have all the necessary properties which are defined as the parameters of the event. And then when it comes to log it, you simply pass all the correct parameters in the same order and the event gets logged to the blockchain. Pretty easy. There's a huge debate internally about when you should fire events because it does cost gas. So users have to pay a little extra gas, even though it's cheaper than writing state variable data. Uh, you have to make the des design freight trade off of like when you want to ask users to pay extra gas so that observers can have more information. But we're going to say that liquidations qualify. We'd like to know the history of liquidations. We'd like to have a paper trail of what you lost, how much you lost. So we're going to say that our event is going to consist of the user that's being liquidated. Uh, you could also add, if you wanted, a second user address mapping of the uh, user that caused the liquidation. And we're going to pass the details of the loan at the time of liquidation. So this is simply going to be passing the loan structure from above. Because we've defined the structure, we were able to pass that through to the event, and everything works great. And now we have a completely working stablecoin event, which will be enough to qualify to pass the tests. Let's create our liquidation function. That's the only thing standing between us and victory here. So let's create an internal function, which we're going to use, uh, which is just going to check if the user is subject for liquidation. We'll pop this at the bottom of our internal functions. And this is going to be accessed in two places. We'll also create an external function so that users who are you know, predatory and want to steal people's collateral can ping any user address and see if they're a subject for liquidation. And we'll use this to validate before we liquidate a user that they're actually subject for liquidation. So this will return a boolean, true or false, for the given user. And our function is pretty simple. We're just going to say, is the price of the token less than the liquidation price? Now, one of the things that stablecoins like the actual Curve USD do is they store a moving range of the price. So you don't get liquidated right when it dips under, but only if it stays under for a certain amount of time. The better way of doing it, uh, but we're not doing anything so fancy. We're just looking, is the price less than the liquidation price? If so, return true. Let's create the mapping of this function to an external view function, because this is great for loan sharks. We're going to use the exact same function name without the underscore before it. Exact same properties. We'll leave room for doc strings. 
You always want to have doc strings for external functions. Internal functions, you don't need it quite so much. And we simply check if the user can be liquidated. So notice is user subject to liquidation. The param is the user. And the return is a boolean true if up for liquidation. Easy enough. See how easy it is to have nice, robust documentation. Only thing left is to actually build our liquidation function. So this one is fairly simple. Definition of the function will be called liquidate. Again, pass a user. We'll have no return properties here. We'll leave some space for documentation because it's an external function. Our pseudocode is pretty simple. Let's first verify price is below liquidation. Then we're going to clear out loan data and then we'll liquidate. So this first one's as easy as can be because we already created the internal function to check. We're again going to call self.canLiquidate, the same external function which people are checking to see if the user can be liquidated is the exact criteria here. Then we're going to clear out the loan data. So to clear out the loan data, we're going to want to fire an empty loan. Liquidation price of zero, zero being the default value for UNT256, and most importantly, deposit amount. The record of how much they have of in collateral is zero. Now we want to fire the loan struct for the user as an event. So let's just log it here before the loan is cleared out. Otherwise, we'd have to create some variables to store the properties of that. In other words, when we're logging our liquidation event, there was two parameters. The first was the user being liquidated, and the second was the loan data. We already have the loan data struct for that user set as of this line, and this line we cleared out. So it's a good place to log it, even though the liquidation hasn't yet happened. So finally, we're going to liquidate the user. And this stablecoin is going to give whoever calls this function the entire collateral amount if the user gets liquidated. So that is the transfer val. I'm putting a separate line for readability. And on this line, they actually do the transfer. Easy enough. We'll start the tests running over here while I finish up my doc strings. Mostly want to see if I have any typos, because I usually have a typo, and sure enough, I do. Maybe you're eagle-eyed enough to catch it as I was typing. Problem here is that there is no such thing as liquidation price, but a liquidation price is a real concept. This is how you know I'm doing these live. All right, compile. Let's add in our doc strings. Be liquidated. And we shouldn't expect these tests to give us any trouble because that's just the ERC20 tokens. The test withdraw where we'll know if this is a fully working stablecoin. And if you've been following along, then congratulations. It appears this test is close to passing, which means we have a fully working stablecoin. Now, we would not recommend you deploy this because this hasn't been audited. The test coverage is not 100% complete. There's likely a few small bugs that we'd like to tighten up before we actually consider this robust and ready. But in terms of the rough contours of creating a Viper-based stablecoin from scratch, you're there. Congratulations, you're officially a Viper developer. So you could mint this, uh, give yourself a certificate on the blockchain and prove it. We have a unit coming up on how we can expand this. Uh, so we've already seen the contours of the actual Curve USD. The next unit is going to cover how we can make this look a bit more like the actual Curve USD. But this is just a uh, feature creep. You have a working stable coin, so congratulations. Drop any questions and comments, and we'll be happy to get back to you.